Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. Today we've got a bit of a special treat for everyone. This is a compressor that a viewer uh, goes by the name of Ed. He sent to me to evaluate, take a look at, because it was a warranty failure that he has since got replaced. And he said, hey, they didn't ask me for this one back. Would you want to take a look at it on the show and take it apart and see what's wrong with it? Uh, I said, absolutely. I would be delighted to do that. And he was kind enough to ship it to me on his dime. I will ship it back to him on my dime. But what a great way to support the channel by getting us his troubled compressor so that we can take a look at what went wrong. Now, my original diagnosis on the phone with him was that this motor failed uh, at the pinion gear on the motor. Now, there's two possibilities still. It could have been that, or that could have been a secondary failure that was actually triggered by the connecting rod, uh, connecting rod bearing. I'm going to pull this apart. We're going to take a look at each one of the parts and uh, see, what, see what's going on with this poor girl. I don't think it's worth uh, necessarily fixing. Um, the motor and pinion gear assembly have to replace as a unit. So it's not generally very cost effective, but I will have some of those very shortly. They're actually on their way to my local airport and I will have them on the website shortly. So if you really love your compressor and you want to replace the motor and gearbox, I will have a few of those in stock and also a ton of CS3 controller boards as well. Well, without further ado, let's get to work. All right, folks, first thing we're going to do is power on our AC source. Yep. That motor is just spinning. So it's not connected to the driveline anymore. Let's uh, have a look inside and see what we find. First thing we're going to do is pull this head off. Next thing, we're going to drop our M5 fastener down the top of the piston. Going to expose the wrist pin connector and line that up. All right, going to cheat and use just a regular screwdriver to get that wrist pin out of there. Wrist pin looks pretty good. There's no scoring or obvious wear. And now we should be able to pull this piston out easily enough. You can see how black this grease is on the top. And what is also curious is um, there really isn't that much grease in this uh, in this piston either. I, I usually fill these up this channel right here but this one clearly has not had that done and this also doesn't look to be uh, the same grease they are shipping with currently which is more of a bright white uh, this is more of a beige so this may be the older lower performance lubricant that they used Anyway, next thing we're going to do is pop this top cover off. Okay, red cover is gone. Now we're going to flop it over on its side and pull these four bolts that tie the bottom chassis to the pump and motor. All right, we're going to need our trusty 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet and the driver bit. There we go. All right. Get that out of the way. 
And the next thing we're going to do is remove these six face screws on here. Again, we're putting into service this Eklund uh, hex T-driver set with no ball ends because ball ends uh, should only be used when you absolutely can't get anything else in there. All right, loosening up the last bolt on this connection between the pump cylinder housing and the motor gearbox should be able to and we've got a tie wrap there we go as you can see there's no friction at all on this bearing This doesn't look like a very high-end grease on this, but I can feel really bad things <laughs> right here. This is just kind of skipping around on that pinion like their engagement isn't the best. So I think we're about to open this up into some genuine unpleasantness. Oh, yeah. You can see that wear on the pinion is just horrible. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I don't like this grease that they put in here. I, uh, I really feel a lot better about this high-end Red Molly um, on this pinion and on this ring gear. Uh, this is just, just a shame. It doesn't look like the ring gear actually took much punishment. We're going to clean that up and take a look at it close up. But, uh, I think if you just had a motor with a pinion on it, you could probably get back into business because it doesn't look like this gear is too badly worn, but let's clean it up and check it out. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll put some close-ups on the screen right now. <laughs> I, I just brushed a little grease off the surface of this gear, and honestly, it's not even worth cleaning. It there's enough distortion and uneven wear on these teeth that if you were to put another pinion on there, it would just it would lead to its destruction. Um, gear should always be replaced as a pair. I don't even know why I I thought it might survive. But I'm not a big fan of this grease that they're using in there either. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to recommend that you use my Red Molly. Uh, it is a really really good grease with a really good temperature range. And this gear or this grease is used on nearly every wheel bearing assembly that races the Baja 1000. That's that's how highly regarded it is. So I think it may be a good choice for this gearbox. In fact, I think when I tear mine down, I'm going to uh, replace that grease. And it's certainly in my, my maintenance video that's coming up, the, the complete teardown and reassembly, I'm going to get rid of all of this grease that comes in this assembly. And I'm going to replace it entirely with this. And I'm also going to recommend repacking this bearing in this connecting rod and lubricating that with this grease as well, cleaning it out the remnants of the old grease completely. But yeah, I think we understand why this one uh, no longer works. Hard for a gear to do its job with no teeth on it. And uh, Ed, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to peek inside your warranty case and see what's up. One other thing that I found really curious about Ed's motor is that it actually does not have the three millimeter fitting on the backside for driving the, uh, 
motor armature directly, and I was completely baffled as to why that wasn't there. And I'm going to try it with a uh, 2.5. Nope, not 2.5. And it's not a 2 either. It's almost like this motor got out of the factory or it's an older rev or something something is up with this and i don't i don't pretend to know what it is but it should have a three millimeter fitting on the back so that you can drive it with a wrench just like this and maybe this was very early production or something i don't know okay folks to wrap this up um we uh, we just wanted to take a quick little peek into uh, one of the failure modes of this compressor are they are they perfect no they're not um, these are inexpensive portable compressors from china and i i really believe that this particular make um, and specifically the model the cs2 i think is about the best of its class as far as durability and serviceability for the future I don't know of anybody else who's got parts as available as I do for the CS2 and the CS3. I think it's a cool little compressor. Are they immune to part failures and uh, them getting a bad batch of parts from their vendors? I mean, understand that these companies aren't vertical. They don't manufacture every piece they get. So they're susceptible to supply chain hiccups as well. So you know, hey, it is going to happen that there are failures, but I think what really stands out here is how well they do stand by these. Ed, the guy who let me take this apart and take a peek inside, uh, has a brand new unit right now. Um, this one failed. He got a new one. I, one thing I would like to see from GX, though, I'd like to see them require the manufacturer to serialize these so that we can get a little better control on what units have issues and what issues don't. Yeah, that's I guess that's my only uh, only thing I would change. But yeah, they spend a lot of time putting patent numbers and stuff on their product that if you actually research the patents, they don't actually apply to these units. So I don't understand the marketing behind that. But uh, anyway, solid little compressors. I use mine all the time. Mine are right here. Uh, I think uh, I think Ed's got a good little treasure trove of parts here. I think the cylinders in this look really good. I think the piston looked really good. I think uh, he's got some good replacement parts here for the future. So good for you, Ed. Well done. That's all I've got this week, folks. And I want to thank you all for visiting the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. Remember to be a light in the darkness. It matters, especially in these interesting days we find ourselves on. And please do consider joining the YouTube channel. Uh, it really helps fund a lot of the things that I do here. And I would love to start exploring uh, more of the GX line. Uh, and I hope to uh, hope to iron out a deal with them that, that yields to us getting better access to compressors to torture. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.